Nowadays, when we buy clothes, most of us just go to a store and find our size. But this ready-to-wear clothing has not always been the case. All those early textiles that were being manufactured in factories still had to be assembled into clothes, whether at home or, if you weren't at home, like so many of the new wage workers of the city, by tailors. Now, while those wage workers were at the margin, it was a pretty specialized trade. There were uh, just tailors all over the city if you needed them, but for the most part, this could be done at home. Sailors, in particular, needed ways to have clothes made for them. In 1800, there were six slop shops where clothes could be made for sailors who, for whatever reason, I'm not one to judge sailors, had a penchant for ending up naked. So this idea of clothiers, people who would have ready-to-wear clothing available, really didn't exist until around 1820, as not just sailors needed clothes, but all of New Yorkers needed clothes. And they wanted to rely on the market to do it. They didn't want to rely on the tailor anymore. And this is a transformation in how people dress themselves. It sets the stage for a long arc of New York City becoming the center of not just textiles, but in terms of clothing manufacture for, ground, for uh, telling what happens today as the center of fashion in the world. By 1860, there were nearly 500 clothiers in New York City employing 60,000 people, people cutting cloth, uh, especially men, women, especially as seamstresses sewing all that cloth together in factories. A merchant magazine in the middle of this long transformation in the 1840s remarked that, quote, it used to be one job to seek for the cloth and another to repair to the tailor. We now see everywhere not only the uh, economist, that is a cheapskate, but the man of fashion saving his time and his money by procuring the very articles he requires all ready made. And so for the urban masses who are living buck to buck, the vertical integration, that is the combination of the textile buying with a textile creation into clothes, meant cheaper clothes than they could ever get from a tailor. Not as nice perhaps, but not as bad as a sailor would get at a slop shop. Cheaper clothes were frequently pointed to as a triumph of the market in this new democracy. A visiting British aristocratic lady critically and admiringly said, if we may talk of a rabble in a republic, it is a rabble in black silk waistcoats. One of the many firms that began in this period was a firm that we still uh, enjoy the products of today, Brooks Brothers. Brooks Brothers was started in 1818 by Henry Brooks in New York City. Now, understandably, it was near the wharves at the corner of Catherine and Cherry Streets because that's where the sailors could get access for the clothes. It started as a store for sailors, and it made all the clothes that sailors might want. Pea coats, monkey jackets, duck trousers. These were all very cheap. And they were cheap because he bought the cloth and made the clothes himself. This process of making, buying and making the clothes brought the prices way, way down. Now, I say made himself, but Henry Brooks was no tailor. He couldn't even sew. What he did was what so many clothiers did in this period. They hired out seamstresses. They hired people to come in and make the clothes. And so Henry Brooks was not a skilled craftsman. Henry Brooks was a merchant. Henry Brooks was a merchant who embraced the market. He, like so many others, bought his cloth at auction. Those great wharves of New York City were places where as cloth came in, it was also sold at auction. And so prices were driven way, way down and were set by the market. So he wasn't contracting with individual companies. He was contracting with the market itself, relying on the market in this vast trade network to distribute all those goods. Now, this transformation of ready-made from something that is meant for the roughest sort, the, the sailors at the docks, into something for even the dandified masses, is something that occurs over the 1820s and 1830s. Tailoring clothes is still perfect, and that's certainly what the very wealthy did. But the ready-to-wear industry began to expand in 
moving up the income ladder. New York City clothes, like Brooks Brothers, began to be sold across the country, even across the ocean, acquiring a cachet that British cloth had before the revolution. And unlike northern cloth, which could just as frequently end up on the backs of slaves as on the backs of freemen, only the relatively well-off could afford Brooks Brothers. So clothing became, began to become something different than cloth. Part of what made this possible, and it's very hard to imagine this being novel in any way, was the spread after 1820 of measuring tape. The very fact that you could measure a human body meant that you could standardize clothes, that you could standardize uh, the fit of clothes to acquire, uh, allow for a higher quality of fit. And the standardization meant that you could actually produce clothes for people you had never seen before. Anonymous, impersonal, like the market itself. Now, there aren't standard sizes across retailers like we have today, but it still makes possible the production for a vast market. Imperfect, market-driven, cheaper. By the 1850s, Brooks Brothers was ready to expand, outside of becoming that older, dingy space into something that more glamorous and fit with its new image of um, a prosperous product that could be sold anywhere. And so it was not Henry Brooks, but his sons that really expanded the brand up market. And they built in the 1850s a new four-story building at the center of it all, at Broadway and Grand Streets, right in the middle of Manhattan, moving away from those early docks. There were huge six by 12 foot mirrors in the middle of the stores for shoppers to look at themselves and to reflect light coming in from the windows all around. This was no dingy space. There were black walnuts um, inlays on columns with golden capitals. There were frescoes. There were 200 employees to help you shop. This was no dock shop. This was part of the new glamorous nature of ready-to-wear.